Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a stock that recently announced earnings for the second quarter of 2023, and that stock is Google, or in this case, Alphabet. And as we can see, over the last year, Alphabet is up 18%, while the rest of the market is up 15%. So they are outperforming the market over the one-year chart. And so in this video, I'm going to look into some of the recent news that came out surrounding Google. I'm going to look into their financial statements, and then I'm going to use a discounted cash flow model along with a weighted average cost of capital to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Alphabet. And so in this article, we can see it's titled Alphabet Reports Better Than Expected Quarterly Results Driven by Growth in the Cloud. Some key points they touch on right out of the gate include the fact that Alphabet's second quarter revenue rose 7% year over year and their cloud revenue climbed 28% year over year. Right here, they point out that Google shares rose 7% on Tuesday after the company reported better than expected revenue and profit driven by growth in its cloud computing unit. Their YouTube ads revenue segment grew from 7.4 billion to 7.6 billion year over year, and their Google Cloud segment grew from 7.8 billion to 8.03 billion year over year. We can see right here, they point out that across the tech industry, investors have been looking for updates on cost cutting measures implemented earlier in the year as a result of job cuts and mass layoffs. And they've also been searching for the impact of AI investments on profitability, mainly through a lot of these search engine companies like Google and Microsoft with their Bing search engine, which are trying to implement ChatGPT and other AI driven search engines to increase the usability of their products. Lastly, right here, they pointed out that Alphabet so far year to date is up 47% compared to a 19% gain for the S&P 500. So Alphabet's doing pretty good so far midway through the year and they've reported better than expected revenue and earnings growth. So that's all very good news. Right here in their financial statements, we can see this is their balance sheet comparing their December 2022 to June 2023 results. Total assets during that time period are up from $365 billion to $383 billion. And then we can see most of their business is financed by equity compared to liabilities. They have $115 billion of total liabilities and $267 billion of total equity. Retained earnings increased from $195 billion to $200 billion. So they do have more cash to redistribute to shareholders if they want to. Right here, we can see consolidated statement of income. Year over year, revenue increased 7% from $69.6 billion to $74.6 billion. And then earnings increased from $16 billion to $18.3 billion, which is an increase of 14.8% year over year for their bottom line net income. Lastly, this is their cash flow statement. We can see that operating cash flow increased from $19.4 billion to $28.6 billion year over year. And then we can see they repurchased about the same amount of common stock in the second quarter, around $15 billion for the second quarter for 2022 and 2023. So they're pretty much prioritizing returning value back to shareholders equally in both periods. But the only difference is that obviously this year they had way more operating cash flow. So the amount of money they returned to shareholders as a ratio to their operating cash flow decreased compared to last year. Right here, this is my discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Google. We can see the growth rate that I'm using here is 21.32%. I calculated this growth rate by using this calculation right here. Their free cash flow in 2018 was $22.83 billion and their free cash flow in 2022 was 60 billion dollars that's a increase over the course of five years and so if i click right here you can see the formula i used up here basically i divided the ending free cash flow by the beginning free cash flow and then put that to the exponent of the number of years and then that gives me the historical average growth rate compounded annually year over year so that's the historic growth rate and i'm just going to use that for the projected growth rate for the next five years and then be conservative and cut that value in half for the next five years after that. The discount rate, which I'm using to discount the 
free cash flow metrics back to today, the present value of their free cash flow, I'm using the weighted average cost of capital of 7.54%. I calculated that using this weighted average cost of capital equation here. We can see first I found the cost of equity by adding the risk-free return to the beta of Google and then multiplying that by the overall market return minus the risk-free return, which gave me the cost of equity. We can see the cost of their debt right here is about uh, interest rate of 1.23%. And then of their equity portion, we saw from their balance sheet that most of their business is financed by equity compared to liabilities. They have about 70% equity, 30% debt. And so we can see if I use the weighted average cost of capital, multiply the equity proportion by the cost of equity and add that to the debt proportion multiplied by the cost of debt and then multiply the debt proportion by the tax shield, we can see that that gives me a weighted average cost of capital for Google of 7.54% interest rate. That's what I used to calculate the discount rate here. Terminal value 10, free cash flow for their most recent full year was 60 billion. They have an $85 billion net cash position on their balance sheet and about 5.87 billion shares outstanding. That puts their estimated intrinsic value per share at around $337 per share, which compared to their current share price means that they are definitely currently trading below intrinsic value per share since they're currently trading at $129 per share that means right now they're trading at around 30 percent of their estimated intrinsic value so or they're trading at about uh, less than a 50 percent margin of safety so at a 70 percent margin of safety essentially at the moment which is obviously a very good buying opportunity based on these projected growth rates and weighted average cost of capital and right here, I did a competitor slash industry analysis comparing them against some of their other competitors. In this case, I used Meta and Microsoft. Microsoft because they obviously have a competitive search engine and Meta because they have a competitive ad platform. We can see that across the board, Google has the lowest gross profit margin, but they have a net profit margin that's slightly ahead of Meta. And they also have a middling of the pack return on assets. They have the lowest price to earnings ratio, currently priced at 25 times earnings and they do not pay a dividend. Microsoft is the only company that pays a dividend. They pay out around 80 cents for every $100 you invest into Microsoft. So judging by this, it looks like Google is very competitive, but they're not really leading in any of the profit margin ratios. For gross profit, you'd obviously give it to Meta, and then for net profit, you'd give it to Microsoft. Then lastly, to end off the video, I wanted to compare Google to some of the other companies that we've looked at in past videos. In terms of intrinsic value, we can see that Google is at the top of our list across all of the companies we've looked at. Google is trading at the best share price compared to their intrinsic value. Right now, share price is $130 per share. Intrinsic value is estimated to be $330 per share. So that means that their share price compared to intrinsic value is about 38%. So far, Google, Alibaba, GE, and Etsy are the only companies we've looked at that are trading below intrinsic value. Historically, Google's growth rate was about 21%. That puts them at seventh place on this table here. They do not pay a dividend, so even though they're on the table because we haven't really looked at that many companies ever since we added the dividend yield chart, they don't really make it on there necessarily because they don't pay a dividend. For gross profitability, Google had about a 55% gross profit margin, not good enough to get them onto the table. Adobe holds the number one spot at 86%. And then for net profit margin, they had a 21% net profit margin, puts them in ninth place on the net profit table. For quarter two year over year revenue growth, Google had 7% year over year revenue growth. That puts them in sixth place compared to all of the companies we've looked at. Tesla comes in first place with a 47% year over year revenue growth for the second quarter. And then for second quarter year over year earnings growth, we can see Google had an increase in their earnings year over year for 14.8%. Kura Sushi comes in first, pl first place with a 240% increase in their earnings for the second quarter year over year. And lastly, for stock performance over the last five years, we can see that Google does not make it onto this table. Over the last five years, they've returned 119%, which is not good enough to get them onto this table. Tesla holds the number one spot with a 1,144% return over the last five years. So based on this, it looks like Google is fairly competitive in their earnings growth and also in terms of profitability. And then 
most importantly, they're most competitive in terms of intrinsic value. They are trading at the best price relative to intrinsic value compared to any of the companies we've looked at based on the discounted cash flow model and our metrics. But across the other tables, they're not doing that well, especially in stock performance. That chart mainly belongs to Tesla. For industry analysis, we saw that Google is pretty competitive, but they're not really dominating in any respect. And then right here, we saw that based on this discounted cash flow model and the weighted average cost of capital for Google's balance sheet, they are currently trading below intrinsic value per share. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Google. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.